Thanks to Maddox for sponsoring today's video. Today we're going to establish one of the most viral formulas on the internet, and that is, well, the sum of all natural numbers equals minus one twelfth. But of course, really the sum of all natural numbers is divergent because it's getting larger and larger and larger and larger. So we interpret this as, well, the Riemann zeta function evaluated at negative one, which will introduce the Riemann zeta function for anyone that doesn't know what it is in just a second. And then we think about that as like some sort of regularization of this sum of all natural numbers. Okay, and the approach that we're gonna take uses integration by parts, and well, that's kind of all there is to it. Of course, as you'll see, we're like using some sort of trick that's not allowed in one of the steps. I'll let you find that step. I think that'd be a nice, like a little bit of a homework exercise. That being said, it's only, you know, barely not allowed if I'll say that. I'm particularly excited about today's sponsor, MattX, a company that wants to hire you, the viewer of this video. MattX is a company developing chips for large language models. By investing all of their silicon into this specialized application, their chips can perform much better than GPUs. They are hiring for software, compiler, machine learning, and silicon engineering roles. Visit maddox.com slash Michael Penn for more information, or click on the link in the description or pinned comment. Thanks once again to MadX. Okay, so let's recall a couple of facts, one of which will prove and then jump into the meat of our, you know, establishment of this very famous formula. So first, let's recall the gamma function. So gamma of z is defined to be the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the z minus 1 e to the minus t dt. And this is like a generalization of the factorial. So observe that gamma of n plus 1 is n factorial if n is a natural number. Then we have z gamma of z is equal to gamma of z plus one. And so, well, that really starts making it look a little bit more like a factorial even. And so you could establish this rule right here using integration by parts on the formula right above. And then finally, there's this formula down here that has to do with the Riemann zeta function, which we will establish. And that is, the sum is n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n minus 1 times n to the minus s is equal to 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus s times this zeta function. Okay, so let's establish this over here. But first, let's recall that this Riemann zeta function evaluated at s is equal to the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the s. So in other words, it's equal to the sum as n goes from one to infinity of n to the minus s. And then, well, let's observe that if s is strictly bigger than one, then, well, this thing converges. But since it converges for these values of s bigger than one, we can actually use this as the definition of maybe the entire or the extended function. And so, you know, for example, if we take zeta of two, so that's gonna be the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n squared, that's well known to be pi squared over six. And then similarly, gamma of, or sorry, zeta of four is pi to the four over 90. Zeta of three, five, seven odd values, they don't have expressions in terms of pi like the even values do. So now let's get to this formula down here. So let's just start with this left-hand side. So we'll have the sum as n goes from one to infinity, we have minus one to the n minus one, and then n to the minus s. So I'm gonna split this into even parts and then odd parts. So the even parts, well, those will be even values of n. Well, that is connected to an odd exponent of the minus one, which gives you a minus sign. The odd values of n is attached to an even exponent of minus one, which is attached to a plus sign. So we can split it up like this. So this is gonna be the sum as n goes from one to infinity 
2n plus 1 to the minus s minus the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of uh, 2 times n to the minus s. So we've got something like that. But now our trick will be to add another copy of this even part and then also subtract it. So let's do that. So we're going to do plus the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 2n to the minus s. And then we're also going to subtract it. So we're not actually changing it at all. We're adding the number 0. OK, but now let's observe that this stuff that I'm underlining in magenta has positive, well, a positive coefficient. And then also it turns out that it adds up all of the natural numbers. This takes the odd ones and that over there takes the even ones. So we can push this back together and then re-index so that we're not individually looking at um, evens and odds to get the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of n to the minus s. And then here with this stuff that I'm underlining in green, notice those are both attached to a minus sign and they're exactly the same. Furthermore, I can factor a 2 to the minus s out of that. But since they're the same, I get double those. And in addition, factoring the 2 to the minus s out means that in the end, I factor a 2 to the 1 minus s out. And then I've got my sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of n to the minus s. So that 2 to the minus s was brought out. Oh, but now let's observe that this object right here, as well as this object right here, is simply that original zeta function. So this is zeta of s. So in the end, we have 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus s times this zeta function evaluated at s. So now here is the idea as we move forward. And that idea is to find some sort of equivalent formulation of this Riemann zeta function. So instead of as this infinite sum, maybe it'll have, well, not to give you a spoiler, maybe it'll have an integral representation. And then after that, we will evaluate zeta evaluated at minus 1, which with this equivalent formulation will be equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and so on and so forth. Of course, this is where we regularize or we extend this zeta function from the place where it naturally converges to a larger portion of the complex plane. Okay, so now that we've established our formula over here, let's maybe get to start it, get started on our main result. So we're going to start with an integral and well we're going to manipulate this integral until we get our zeta function which maybe it's not on the board right now but since it's going to be so useful let's maybe put its definition over here. So we have zeta of s is equal to that sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of n to the minus s. Okay, so let's see, we've got this integral from 0 to infinity of s, x to the s minus 1, over e to the x plus 1. And, well, we're going to start by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by e to the minus x. And we'll see why we do that after just a second. So that'll give us s, x to the s minus 1, 1 plus e to the minus x, and then we have e to the minus x, dx. But now, let's observe if x is between 0 and infinity, e to the minus x is less than 1. So let's maybe note that over here. So for x, on that interval from 0 to infinity, e to the x is between 0 and 1. I guess it's exactly equal to 1 at 0, but that's the only point where it's exactly equal to 1. But that means we can expand, well, the inside of the integral using a geometric series. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. So let's maybe point that out. Here we'll use the following fact. 
and that is that if we take one over one minus u, that can be expanded as the sum as n goes from one to infinity of u to the n minus one. So now we're gonna do that where u is equal to, well, it's gotta be minus e to the minus x for this all to work out. Okay, so let's see where that leads us. So we're going to have s and then the sum as n goes from one to infinity, and then we'll have minus one to the n minus one, again, because we've got a plus sign in that denominator instead of a minus sign, and the minus sign is inside the geometric series expansion formula. And then after that, we'll have an integral from zero up to infinity of x to the s minus one, and then e to the minus nx, dx. And you might say, well, why don't we have like a n minus one in the exponent? Well, that's because we've got this other e to the minus x that sort of like builds everything out. So now from here, we're going to make a substitution that makes this integral look a little bit more like this gamma function. So let's maybe do that substitution over here. It's a pretty straightforward substitution. We'll take t and set it equal to n times x. Notice that that means that x is equal to t over n. It also means that dx is equal to dt over n. So let's put all of those parts in. So we have s, we've got that sum as n goes from one to infinity minus one to the n. And then we'll have our integral from zero to infinity and that'll leave us with a t to the s minus one over n to the s minus one. And then after that, we'll have an e to the minus t, and then our dx is dt over n. But now let's maybe bring all of those n's out and we'll have s, and then the sum as n goes from one up to infinity, minus one to the n minus one, that should have been n minus one, and then we'll have an n to the minus s, just based off of how those denominator n's work. And then we'll have our integral from zero to infinity of t to the s minus one, e to the minus t dt. But let's look at this integral that I'm boxing in brown and observe that that's exactly my gamma function right here. In fact, this is the gamma function evaluated at s. So here we have gamma of s. But then furthermore, we've got this s out front that we can multiply into that gamma function and use this fact right here that we'll leave it as a gamma s plus one. So let's see, that leaves us with a gamma s plus one and then we'll have a sum as n goes from one up to infinity of minus one to the n minus one n to the minus s. Oh, but look at that. That sum is exactly this third tool that we just developed. So let's uh, rewrite that in terms of the zeta function. So we have gamma s plus one, and then after that we'll have minus or one minus two to the one minus s, and then zeta of s. And now let's look at our extreme left and right hand side. So we've got this nice integral up here is equal to this product that involves the gamma function, this one minus a power of two, and the zeta function. But what we can do is solve that for the zeta function. That's exactly what we'll do. And we'll start with that on the top of the next board. Okay, so there we have it. We solved that equation that we had on the last board for zeta of s. But recall that our goal is zeta of minus one. That'll give us this quote unquote sum of all natural numbers. We've already done the sketchy step where this is not exactly the sum anymore. So if you wanna go look for that sketchy step, that's on the last board. So maybe post in the comments if you find it. But look at this. If we set s equal to minus one here, this integral is sort of gnarly. We'll have x to the minus two over e to the x plus one. That's hard to work with. So what we'll do instead is, well, we'll do integration by parts twice. But in order to ready ourselves for that, we're gonna multiply the numerator as well as the denominator by s plus one. 
So we'll have s plus one over s plus one. And that's because observe that this looks like the derivative with respect to x of x to the s has occurred. But if we can make it look like the second derivative, then we'll have an x to the s plus one. And then that's really nice for plugging in s equals minus one because the power of x will cancel. Okay, so anyway, we've got to get to that point though. Okay, so multiplying by that will leave us with the following expression. So we'll have one over gamma of s plus two using this rule one more time to maybe bring that, absorb that s plus one into the gamma s plus one. And then we'll have one minus, we still have this two to the one minus s, and then we'll have our integral from zero up to infinity of s times s plus one times x to the s minus one all over e to the x plus one dx. Great. And now let's outline our integration by parts in this box. So the first step is going to go like this. We're going to take u to be equal to 1 over e to the x plus 1. So that's going to make du equal to, let's see, e to the x over e to the x plus 1 squared dx. So that's pretty straightforward. And then we're gonna take dv to be equal to, well, I'm gonna set it equal to s times s plus one times x to the s minus one dx. That's gonna make v equal to s plus one times x. Okay, nice. But now let's expand this out using the integration by parts formula. So we'll have u times v minus the integral of v du. Let's write the u times v off to the side. We'll see that that's zero and then we'll collect everything else um, below. Okay, so u times v, so that'll be, let's see, that should be an s power there. That'll be s plus one x to the s over e to the x plus one. We need to evaluate that from zero to infinity. Observe that evaluating that at zero is zero because we'll have x evaluated at zero. Evaluating it at infinity is really taking the limit as x goes to infinity, but that e to the x in the denominator will dominate whatever's going on in the numerator, meaning this whole thing goes to zero. So, but then recall we also need this minus the integral of v du. So let's put that down here. So we'll have one over gamma of s plus two, and then one minus two to the one minus s. And now we have our integral from zero up to infinity of, so it's gonna look like this, s plus one e to the x, and then x to the s all over e to the x plus one quantity squared dx. And now, well, we're gonna do an integration by parts again, and maybe I'll just, say what u and dv are for this second round of integration by parts, and then you can do all of the calculations carefully. So our u will be equal to e to the x over e to the x plus one squared. So of course we're gonna use the quotient rule for that. And then our dv will be our uh, s plus one uh, x to the s dx. Okay, nice. So now putting that all together, using the integration by parts formula, we'll have this constant which is out front, which I'll just copy down. And then after that, we'll have the integral from zero up to infinity of x to the s plus one. And then after that, e to the x minus one all, all over e to the x plus one cubed times e to the x dx. Okay, so that's looking good and we're actually almost there. Let's bring that up and then we'll do the final steps. So here's where we just landed, this nice expression for gamma of s. And now we're ready to, we'll simply evaluate this at minus one. So let's do that. So we'll have gamma of minus one on the one hand that is equal to one plus two plus three plus four, plus dot, 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 the sum of all natural numbers by our definition of 
this uh, zeta function. I think I said gamma, but I meant the zeta function. But then on the other hand, that's going to be equal to 1 over gamma of 1 times 1 minus, let's see, that'll be 2 to the power 2. So that'll be 1 minus 4. And then we'll have our integral from 0 up to infinity. And then, well, this x to the s plus 1 will disappear. And we'll have e to the x minus 1 over e to the x plus 1 cubed times e to the x dx. And in order to evaluate that integral over there, we need to do a bit of a substitution. I'm going to take t and set it. I'm going to take t and set it equal to e to the x plus one, but that's going to make dt equal to e to the x dx. Okay, nice. I guess let's take care of the bounds of integration while we're at it. So notice if x is equal to zero, that tells us that t is equal to two. And then as x approaches infinity, that tells us that t is also approaching infinity. Okay, nice. So let's see, we'll have minus 1 over 3. That's what the constant simplifies down to. I think that's pretty clear. And then we'll have our integral now to go from 2 up to infinity. Let's see, if e to the x plus 1 is t, e to the x minus 1 is going to be t minus 2. So we have t minus 2 all over t cubed dt. But now we can rewrite that as negative 1 third, the integral from 2 up to infinity. We have 1 over t squared minus 2 over t cubed dt. But now that's a fairly simple integral to evaluate. So that's going to give us minus third and then we'll have minus 1 over t plus 2 over, or sorry, plus 1 over t squared. We need to evaluate that from 2 to infinity. But let's take this and we'll flip the sign out here from a minus to a plus, and then we'll change the order of integration here. So this will go from 2 in the top to infinity in the bottom. Plugging in infinity gives us 0. And then in the end, we'll have a third. Plug in two here, we'll have minus half. Plug in two here, we'll have plus quarter. But minus half plus a quarter is negative a quarter. Negative a quarter times a third is negative one over 12. So there we did it. Let's look at the extreme left, which is the sum of all natural numbers, and the extreme right, which is negative 1 12th, and we've come up with this super viral equation. Okay, so let's see what else we could do with this strategy. Let's maybe look at the sum of the squares of the natural numbers. We'll uh, maybe outline how you would calculate that using this method, and then we'll be done. So let's do a little bit of a bonus calculation. So starting here, if we do integration by parts one more time, which I'll leave to you, you come up with this other expression for zeta of s. We have zeta of s is 1 over gamma of s plus 3 times 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus s, and then that integral from 0 to infinity. Now it's x to the s plus 2. And then we've got this rational function where e to the x is the variable. And now, well, let's maybe set s equal to minus 2. So here we have zeta of minus 2. So that's going to give us 1 over zeta of 1, and then we'll have 1 minus 8 there. And then we'll have our integral from 0 to infinity. That x part will disappear. And then let's simultaneously make the same change of variables. So we'll set t equal to e to the x plus 1. And that'll instead make our integral from go from 2 to infinity just as before. And after doing some simplification, we have 1 over t squared and then minus 6 over t cubed and then plus 6 over t to the fourth. So I've skipped some steps here, but this is essentially the same thing that we did before. But now we can finish this off. So notice zeta of minus 2 is 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus dot, dot, dot. And that's using the definition of the zeta function. And then over here, we're going to get minus 1 over 7. And now we can take the antiderivative here to give us minus 1 over t. 
And then after that, we'll have plus, let's see, it'll be three over t squared, and then minus two over t cubed. We need to evaluate that from two to infinity. So let's change that order of evaluation again. So we'll have put a two there and an infinity there, change that plus to a minus. And now let's plug in two. So we'll have a seventh, and then we'll have a minus half plus three over four, minus, well, two over eight, but two over eight is one over four. So there we have it. We've got minus half plus three quarters minus one quarter. That's pretty clearly equal to zero. And that gives us a, kind of a, an accompanying formula to the sum of all natural numbers that says that the sum of all squares of natural numbers is equal to zero. And of course, that's one of the trivial zeros of the Riemann zeta function. And, well, if you know anything about the Riemann hypothesis, finding the non-trivial zeros is the important part. And that's a good place to stop.